Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 26, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. I'm sorry, I was too... too Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Vintage Drummer Length, episode number 653. And guess what, folks? It's one that time again. And which we do every month. This time we're actually doing it in the month that it was actually for. So the, the week after the month is over, or the Sunday after the month is over, time to know what's going on. And I have a thing for that right there. On Sunday, what's going on? All right. So in, in the month of June, in the month of June. Uh, we started off the month uh, by uh, forcibly working from home because uh, we had a little COVID scare at work. Mm. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't around anybody, any of the people to potentially get get exposed, but we worked from home anyways, which was kind of a bummer because I had to train people and I preferred them to be in the office with me because it's so much easier to train while in the office. Uh, so how to do work, that? Work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Then, and it was also <laughs> supposed to be the start of a couple months of getting into a hybrid model, where two days we would be able to work from, we would work from home, and three days where we would have to be in the office. Okay. Some of our teams had to be in, it had to be Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday be the their days in the office. Uh, in my my department of training, we decided that Mondays and Fridays would be those days. Um, except for me. I get a little exception because I say, if you are in my training class, you are coming into the office period. Why? Because hi- hybrid isn't mandatory. It is allowed. So, okay. Uh, uh, sadly, with the work from home, two week work from home mandatory thing. Uh, we, we, we had to, but we had one day when we had, uh, like we had finished off that two week with, uh, actually one, the Friday at the end of the two weeks, um, was actually when everybody was supposed to start coming back into the office. So we did. So I got to see the people I had been just been training that week. <laughs> in the office. And then, uh, next week got an entirely new class. And then the next week I got an entirely new class. And this week, I don't have a class. I'm so excited. Oh, yay. Which means I get to work from home and I can actually work on projects that I've been wanting to work on, which I couldn't because I was doing training. Because my job isn't just as a trainer or, or to do training classes, but I've got other things that I would like to do and oh, need please. to do so. I can't uh, imagine that. Yeah, I know. I, I'm I'm multi-purpose. I mean, the original time was actually for me to be working on all the process documentation and everything, but then I got wrapped into actually doing the training class. But I like doing the mm-hmm. training class, so I'm good with that and everything. So that was nice. The only thing was is during that time, some uh, some equipment in my wall. Uh, was uh, a little old and ended up getting some having some issues. So my internet got a little janky. Mm. So uh, and then I finally 
contacted Spectrum. I thought it was something else, but based off of multiple different things, realized, oh, yeah, this is a general internet thing for me. And then I finally contacted Spectrum, finally got somebody in who uh, replaced a few little cabling things right there in my apartment. And now I'm good to go. And in fact, my internet's actually better. Yay! So, plus, <laughs> it, of course, after all of this, I also find out this month my apartment complex is finally getting connected to Google Fiber. Oh, so pretty soon. Ooh. Oh, I can switch away from Spectrum and go to Google Fiber. Oh, I am so excited. Oh no! Fuck you! Oh, oh no! Oh. I live um, in Austin, and this is one of the cities that was lucky enough to get get it before they, they stopped spreading the love. Uh, um, that's so great for you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Miss Thing. <laughs> Sorry. The only thing is, it's it's not. They're in the process of getting it set up so that I can sign up for it. So I don't know when it will actually become available, but they are actively doing it. And they have like pamphlets in the um, uh, leasing office about it, about it coming. We're Google connected. And I'm like, no, you're not. I know. I signed up for notifications. <laughs> and Google says they're not yet. So. I have to wait until you're actually hit up. And then the manager said, oh, it's going to be a couple of weeks. But so ah. um, yeah, I don't know when or how that full process will end up going, but we'll find out once I know that I can. And then I'll be like, OK, just want to be clear. How can it how do I make this process as smooth as possible? And then with, with limited disruption to my life. So we'll be so we'll be figuring that out. Speaking of such things, not to interrupt, but I decided to go check who my local fiber carrier is because I've been here for just over 10 years and I've wanted fiber for like all of those years. And so I normally like just do their little inventory check or whatever. And for the first time ever, instead of saying no, they said not now, please fill out this form for your interest in survey. Oh, well. So now they now they know officially. Bitch, I want <laughs> the fiber at my house, <laughs> at my home. I want my Google Fiber. Well, well it's, it's, for us, it's called VNet, but yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of them, the more regional ones, are still just fine for fiber. It just happens that the, and I'm not sure if AT and T UVerse, which I think is their uh, fiber internet option. Um, I'm not sure if Uverse was available here, but I, I would, if I'm going to have fiber, I would prefer it to be Google fiber. Mm. So, and since Austin is one of the lucky cities to get Google fiber, because they were like, we're going to spread all over the place. And then eventually they just stopped. they like hit Kansas city or something like that. And just was like, eh, we're not doing this anymore. Mm. We'll, we'll keep what we have running. Yeah, part nice. of the reason I've been wanting it is because it's still twenty dollars a month cheaper than what I'm paying for right now through Spectrum. So, yeah, and it's a local company, so you know, mm. even better, and they'll probably actually probably have better service. I'm hoping so. Yeah. Uh, so in in that case, my just my internet stuff will just keep going, getting better, better, better. But so there we are. Better, there we have it. Yay. That's me. Damon. Aren't you special? <laughs> Who had I mean, I'm just I'm just realizing like literally two weeks ago or a few weeks ago, dealing with internet issues yet again. Anyway, um so yeah. Um Pride was June. So as a member of a singing chorus group of people um, called the Cincinnati Men's Chorus. Um, I had a con Pride concert. Yeah, we had our Pride concert. It was a big gay sing. 
So we were doing songs that the words were up on the screen, up a screen behind us, and then the audience could sing along with us. Um, we were, I was a little concerned, I will admit, but I, I promoted it as much as I could, but I was a little concerned because, you know, people, other people singing while you're singing is kind of mm, off. But it worked out really well. One, we didn't hear them. Um, I mean, <laughs> we heard the, the, some people that sang, we heard a little bit of. You could hear it a little bit. But for the most part, you couldn't hear it because, I mean, I couldn't hear it because of where I was on stage. And then I've got the chorus around me. So that part. Was it shady? A little bit. Okay. Um, was that comment shady? A little bit. Um but uh, the audiences were good, were great, especially Sunday. Sunday, apparently, uh, everyone was having a great time. We had some wonderful women. I wish I could have found out who they were. Um, they were rocking, and they were right in the front row, just past the pit, um, so you could see them. And they were happy. Um, yay for that. Uh, um, along with Pride, this week, this past weekend... Um, was the Cincinnati Pride Parade and Festival. Um, so I'm 42. I'm a bigger guy. I'm older, I will admit. So I knew going into Pride, I was going to have to pace myself. Um, it's, it was hot. It was hot. It was it was it was hot. We talked about this before, mm -hmm. um, and what I found out that I kind of will I'm like who the fuck did this? So I decided to uh, volunteer for the men's choruses booth, mm -hmm. and then right before that, and then I would then we were singing at like three o'clock, so I had to call at two thirty. Here's where the booth was. Here's where we were singing. All the way across the fucking park. <laughs> so I was not happy. Um, I stayed, I decided I wasn't going to walk around. I originally pl had planned to before and maybe gradually make my way, you know, grab something to eat, have a little nosh you know, cool down a few times, stop several times and just make my way over there. But instead I was like, I am not moving to the spot till I need to leave. Cause it was hot and crowded <laughs> and there were a bunch of people and it was, it just, it was just everywhere. There were, there were people everywhere. It was a lot of people, 200 and 225,000. I think it's a number maybe more than that, but it was, mm -hmm. it was a packed, packed festival. Well, um, I did eventually make it over to the um, um, place where we were performing. Um, a hot, sweaty, tired, grumpy fucking mess. I will admit it. Um, I don't know who, again, I don't know who came up with the idea of planning all this stuff, but if you're going to have like the chorus sing all the way over here, mm -hmm. and you're going to have the booth all the way on the opposite side of the park, um, that's not, no, no bueno. Not good. <laughs> no. And I get it. I'm fine with not being central. I would I would have been fine if we were just a little off center and I only had to walk like half the way. Walking that whole fucking distance, I oh, I barely made it. And when I got there, I was again hot, heated, hurt. I was hurting. I was hurting. And I literally sat down and I will own. I literally I did not like, oh, come over. They were like, people were like, come over here and sit in the shade. I'm like, I'm not moving. Because I, I don't think I'm going to be able to move for the next, like, 20 minutes. I needed to cool down in some way mm -hmm. and um, rest my body. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, and then we performed. It was great. It was fun. We always performed to um, recordings of us singing previously. So while we are singing the audience can also will he will be able to hear everything that we're performing. So um great, 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 good times, good times. I almost immediately left afterwards. <laughs> I wanted to do more. 
I really, really did. But the heat was getting to me. The crowd was getting to me, mm. especially that. And um, I just did not have it in me. Um, but the festival went on and a lot of people stayed and there were performers and drag queens and drag kings and burlesque and all that stuff all over you know the stage. And I'm sure it went really, really well because I've not heard anyone say boo to anything. So yay for that. Um, speaking of heat, so like I, I was mentioning in, in pre-show, or maybe not even pre-show, it has been an amazing or awkward, awful 24 hours. So woke up Saturday morning to no AC. Mm. Um, I knew it immediately because it was... We've been, you know, with the temperature, the AC has been struggling, I will admit. It has been, you know, when it's in the 90s here, it is, it's hard to get it to like that 70, 69 degrees that we have it set at, the thermostat set at. It is hard, if not impossible. So I do know it runs pretty constantly. On top of that, um, when I came downstairs, I just, you know how you feel, because we, li- we, our bedroom is upstairs. When you come downstairs, you'll usually no- will usually notice a difference between the temperature. Uh-huh. There wasn't there wasn't much of a difference. So I looked at the thermostat. I noticed oh it was it was it was only seventy one, but it was that morning. So I was like, okay, this doesn't feel right. So right next to it is a vent, and I went and put my um, foot at it, and didn't feel anything cold. Didn't sense anything cold. So I stepped outside. And I do not, I did not hear the unit running. So I knew mm. for a fact that it's done. Um, so put in a request, haven't heard from them yet, but I'm sure that they aren't open on the weekends. Um, so we'll see what, what happens um, in the next day or two. Um, but again, that didn't really help because I had to go to the festival, to the parade, pride and all that stuff. So it was warm out there, came home. I mean, I will admit, thank God, Jim's um, AC in his car was working. Um, Cause at least we had that. Um, and then today, we have been, ha- Jim has been having issues with his phone not charging. Um, just, it, it'll, it'll sit on the charger. We have a, he has a pad, he'll sit mm-hmm. it on there not move it, and it doesn't charge at all. Our, and we noticed that the um, the insert, putting it in the, you know, putting connecting it to a charger wasn't working either. So we bit the bullet. We went to AT&T. Um, um, FYI, LG no longer makes phones. Um, we've, had the, we've had the LG V44 several years. We paid for them off. We paid them off a few months ago. Um, but they no longer make phones. So we thought about doing an insurance claim, but the guy, who I, our um, um, guy that was there pretty much was like, you can do a, a claim, but you're, not gonna, you're probably not going to get anything close to comparable. So you might as well, since, you're, since we're eligible for upgrades, might as well just go ahead and get new phones. So I went on ahead and got one, too, because even though mine's working for the most part, it's, you know, old. So, mm-hmm. and Jim and I have both pretty much gotten the same phone every time. So we got two new phones. We have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. I think that's the full name. Um... And so far, it's been pretty good. It's just now it's been like transferring. We've transferred all the data from our you know apps and stuff from the previous phones to the new phone, and now we're dealing with updating everything and getting things back online. And that was a headache. That's what I was doing for the past um, three hours. We were at the store for a good hour, hour and a half because we're also getting um, new Chromebooks to mm-hmm. add to the um uh we're adding one for jim now i'm getting an upgrade to my tablet 
Um, so then, and I figured I've been wanting a Chromebook for a while to just have to take with me to places because um, um, sometimes doing a little tablet is, is just doesn't work. Not a little tablet, but doing a tablet doesn't always work. Um, so this will be the new thing. And here's hoping it all goes well. Um, it, like I said, it's been a couple of days and Jim just, um, I think he's about to come in. We were having issues. It's still hot in this house. It's still super fucking hot in this house. Um, and um, he was going to try to make dinner. And he's like, it is just too hot to like turn on a stove. Um, so he went out to get food. And... Grater's ice cream it is for dinner. <laughs> uh, I think I'd want something a little more substantial. And not so sweet. Okay. <laughs> uh, a salad and Grater's ice cream for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, I had thought about getting a salad, but um, we went to. I mean, like so. Culver's I was on, so if you saw me, Dairy Queen yeah. both sell food. So yeah. So you saw me on the phone twice during this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because we originally planned to go to Wendy's, and Jim was going to get pick me up a salad that I would eat later. Well, the Wendy's didn't have chicken to put in the salad, so the salads weren't available. Mm. I'm like, just order me a burger or whatever. I'm fine. Just get it. And then he called back again, and apparently the fryer's down, so they don't have fries. So he's going to Burger King. <laughs> First world problems. I know. And that's not a criticism. I'm just, like, I'm just labeling it as it is. Yes. That's been me. Gary, how about you? Uh, I've done Pride. I've done Pride twice this month. Mm-hmm. I participated in one, and I helped put on another. So uh, I went to CBUS. I was in the great capital of the, of the state of Ohio mm-hmm. um, recently, and I joined uh, Shutter and uh, AKA Chester, our previous co-host. Um, and I walked with the leather pup contingency, um, which was okay. an interesting experience. I had never been in an actual pride parade before. I have witnessed, but not been in. Um, and it is quite an interesting experience. Um, it was beautiful uh, as a gorgeous day. Yes. Um, so that was that was good for that day. Um, and lots of people slathered up in sunscreen, all that kind of jazz. We stayed hydrated. Yada, yada. Um, so that was really good. Uh, but this weekend, yesterday, um, I was the health and wellness zone coordinator for our Pride Fest here in Erie. Um, there is no official counts yet, but uh, approximately we doubled the size of the parade and doubled the size of the attendance at the Pride Fest nice. from three years ago. So uh, apparently we had roughly about maybe 2,000 involved in the parade and about 5,000 people at the Pride Fest, which is a lot of folks. Um, And the city did not block off a portion of parking spots that they were supposed to. So when I arrived, the board and I, we had to quickly pivot, make some changes. I had to contact the mobile health clinics and be like, hey, by the way, guess what? You're not parking where you think you are. We have new locations. Please call me. But then, of course, I didn't have everyone's contact number, so I'm sending them from my work phone from my work email because that's how I had been coordinating things. So that was exciting. Mm. Um, And there was a beautiful breeze earlier in the day, which then dissipated and it got hot. Uh, So, yes, um, hydrated a lot, did a bunch of sunscreen. Uh, My face got a little little bit of sun, but that's okay. I put in uh, from about 8 in the morning until almost 6.37 in the evening. Mm. And I, too, am older, very fat, out of shape, and hella tired when I got home. Uh, And I basically vegged. I didn't quite pass out into a coma, which I expected to happen. I think my body was so tired it wouldn't even allow me. Wow. <laughs> it was like, you ain't going nowhere, but you also ain't going to fall asleep either. <laughs> I just nice. like, zoned out. Um, 
so yeah, but no, it was, it was a really good event. Um, I was a little perturbed, uh, and this will probably be an ongoing thing and we know this and we know better, but it still happens that people, um, bail. <clears throat> so they may be there in the morning. They may be there to set up. They may be there through most of the day. And then when it comes to the end of the day, when you have like, I don't know, like about a hundred tables, folding tables and roughly 200 chairs, that you've rented, that you set up, that you kind of have to regroup and recollect to give back to the rental company. I mean, they'll come and pick them up, but we don't make them individually okay. go get everything. We try to be nice and make stacks of things and drop them all off at a certain point. So, yeah, it was a lot of stuff. Um, and then I helped take down the drag queen tent because we had... We have um, these 10 by 10 kind of canopy pink tents um, that we've used for merch and stuff before, but we made some changes. And uh, so the drag queens use them. By the way, um, drag queens requested this. So here's something to pass on to performers uh, who are going to be at a pride in a grassy area. Uh, we took plywood and attached carpeting to it and put it on the ground. So they mm. had things to stand on and not sink into the grass. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, and apparently heels and dirt i don't think go well together oh no they don't i found that out in um 19 um <laughs> <laughs> at one of the very first performances ever oh no no no, no. the very first time i ever did drags because uh -huh. it was for it was in college and we did this thing um called wait let me think about it Oh, the name just went out of my head. It'll come to me. Anyways, it was a fundraiser, and it was meant to be a turnabout kind of drag mm -hmm, event. Mm -hmm. um, and anyways, yes, I decided to go and buy myself white satin heels. You can imagine what's coming, David. Mm -hmm. And then uh, was went outside on a break and stepped off the sidewalk. And promptly went shup, shup, yep. into the oh. soft ground in the spring because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it was because it was in April. Mm. And uh, yeah, those heels have never been the same since. In fact, I'm pretty sure I still have them in the basement. I ended up using white out and stuff and painting them later because like they were just ruined, basically. Oh, but I'm sure they did. Yeah. They just became the shitty, you know, practice pair. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, so they appreciated that. Uh, but yeah, it was a very long day oh, um so on top of being the health and wellness zone coordinator i was also there representing the hiv task force that i chair which is part of my job but i wasn't there actually getting paid to work mm. so i was volunteering so i was at the table and i was busy giving away rainbow uh beaded mardi gras beads that had these little pouches on them that had a condom in them and some instructions with our new slogan for our condom program that says love safely and we gave out hundreds upon hundreds of these things. And it was quite comical to me because I went through a new vendor to get them timely so I could have them for Saturday. And then I did not think ahead about all the little human beings that would come by that wanted the ooh shiny like beads. <laughs> so uh, luckily Rex was helping and <laughs> we were unstuffing some of the pouches. <laughs> so oh. we could hand over a set of beads to little ones who wanted to wear the pretty necklace. But of uh. course, parents didn't want them to have the adult stuff. So that was mm. an amusing part of the experience yesterday. Oh, I'm sure. But yeah, no, it all worked out. And um, it was a really good event. And I can't wait to talk about it at work this week. Speaking of which, uh, work, 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 work. Um, it has been quite busy. Um, my coworker who used to be my work wife, who has been off on medical for a year, uh, turned to their notice of resignation and oh, is no. not returning, I believe. And the person who has been filling in as our HIV nurse for the past year has given their notice and is leaving in the next approximate four weeks. Wow. Yes. Have well, then. That. So I was just reading an article in our local paper today about uh, how county government has uh, over 100 vacancies at the moment and they're having difficulty getting people to hire because of the wage scale competitiveness of the you know market. Mm. Blah, blah. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock's. We already know all of this. But anyways, mm -hmm. so um, potentially my work is going to get more exciting and interesting sure. in the coming months. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
I, I mean, I was already predicting that the second half of this year was going to become more challenging. So, yes, there's that. Oh, and then the one that's about to leave to go for a new job opportunity is going to be out not this week, but next week on vacation for an entire week. So, ah. Yes. Always yes, fun. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of stuff like that. And the president of the Pride Alliance, I did talk to me yesterday briefly uh, and wants to talk more and engage with me because they know that I've been doing podcasting for a very long time and um, wants to talk about the potential of creating a podcast for the Pride organization locally. Um, we apparently have access to a facility that has all the equipment um, for a small fee to use. Mm. Um, so, Yes. So um, I may in the near future, <laughs> maybe by the end of this year, be involved in more than one podcast empire thing, whatever. A third show. You, you'll be in a, a part of a uh, non, it won't be a hobby necessarily. <laughs> Though it'll be a hobby that starts consuming my life probably. So, <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah. Uh, we'll sorry see. not sorry well no no no. but here's the oh no baby if there was anybody i was gonna blame it's gonna be uh mr damon right there because he is the one who reached out to me and was like hey would you like to come on to our little podcast here oh <laughs> you shady bitch nine and a half <laughs> years ago so yeah right. that right anyway almost right. uh gary's 10 year anniversary with the show yeah. So that being said, um, that was kind of the month. I mean, it, it's been uh, a whole bunch of different personal experiences. Um, yeah. Uh, notably, the tone between the two different prides uh, did change. Uh, the attitude and the atmosphere yesterday had a lot more like, um, like the one thing that someone commented to me that didn't happen is they thought that there was going to be some counter protests or some protests within Pride because of the recent things that's happened politically within the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and legally. Um, but that wasn't quite the, the the shape. But I will say with absolute certainty, I was quite pleased but also surprised at the number of youth that came to our Pride Fest yesterday and the number nice. of individuals of varying abilities for uh, mobility. Um and it was interesting handing out like the con, the, you know, the free condom supplies and talking to folks. And uh, you know, I met quite a number of people, not a, not a large amount, but you know, a couple dozen people that were like, "Oh, this wouldn't apply to me because I'm ace or I'm asexual," and I knew what that was. So I was like, "That's fine. I'm like, I can take the condom and stuff out, and you can just wear the necklace, or you could give it on to somebody else who might need it." One of them made me laugh, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, my friend really needs it. I'll give him mine." <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so there was cute things like that. There was one woman who was like, what are these bags? And I was like, oh, these bags are part of our free program. They have a dozen condoms and lube and literature inside. And this is, you know, an example of what we have out around the county in various points. And she's like, oh, can I have one? I said, sure. I said, they're free. So she grabs one. She goes, actually, I'll take two. And then promptly, like, scurried away, which cracked me up to no end because it was kind of like, girl, they're free. I don't care. Like, I, I'm not going to – don't take, you know, an armful, but, you know, yeah. just put them to use. I'll, that's that's the I'll, thing. I'll take these. <laughs> right yeah no no like so that, that was the funny part like i've seen it happen more often um than not like as you walk around pride festivals and pride parties again i didn't get a chance to really do it this time around but like there's a lot of giveaway things and um you wonder about like what if i want more than one you're like well, well just just grab what you can you know grab one and be respectful because you don't know how many they have. You don't know how much they, right. you know, want. Now, if you ask for another, then yes, you know, and they give you it to it, then by all means, like, right. be grateful, be gracious. Or, um, or you take one, then you go change your shirt and maybe put on a hat. <laughs> and then you come back through, uh, speak with the different accents. Says, oh, thank you. I appreciate well, that. Why is your voice so high? I don't know. <laughs> That's the way so, I normally talk. Right, right, right. right. So it was interesting because um, I was surprised by the number of people that asked how much anything was mm. on the table. And I was like, oh, no, it's all provided by the Erie County HIV Task Force. And it's all, like, free. I'm like, you, and I started saying, you can take more than one of an item if you're interested in it. I'm like, we have literature. You know, we have the, the beads and the stuff. Um, that I went through an entire box of dental dams. 
maybe <laughs> if I had known about the like the interest and you know the uh the the giveaway ability for the you know the women who love women or the people who you know are into having a barrier when they're um being you know in an oral situation i would have brought more um mm. but yeah i gave away two whole baskets um full of the bagged condoms and stuff it was it was really good wow um, oh, and then uh, I was reflecting on this in pre- before we got into pre-show. Um, so my employer was there. Uh, our RV was there. They were doing COVID vaccinations. And uh, the staff was asking me about the different flags. They were like, well, what does that flag mean? What does that flag mean? <laughs> and I was like, oh, y'all kind of get, trying to get me. I was like, I don't know what every single one of them is. And they kind of looked at me and I was like, well, there's probably about 40 different ones. And they were like, what? So then today, as I'm thinking about this, I was like, oh, heterosexuals yeah they're just not really they're they're not in tune mean, with the, the current movement and even even as a even as an elder gay yeah <laughs> i'm not fully like, i i lost it. i recognize some of them but i still have a hard time remembering what is what and i will right. own that like i know some colors fall into this area right and that's kind of where like okay I can I can kind of go from there a little bit, but there are a few. And I mean, hell, I even saw um, there was one that I've never seen before that someone was carrying, and I was like, I don't even think I know what that is. I don't think I do, but I probably do if I took a second and like looked it up. Um, and I might actually look it up here in a second. Bear with me. Well, so. This is what I ended up saying to them as, you know, because I was hanging for a little bit, but I, you know, I needed to kind of get back to my table. Um, Thank you, Rex, for helping out. Uh, I kind of commandeered you for the day Um, because I was supposed to have five volunteers from our medical reserve corps. And then um, I only ended up with one on the day of. So that was Mm. that was unfortunate. But um, but anyway, so the staff members were asking me about the flags and stuff. And then after talking with them for a good few minutes about the differences, like they were asking about the six colors versus the now progressive, um, you know, inclusive flag. So I was explaining, I'm like, originally there was eight, but like the first flag only ended up having six because pink and teal weren't available as a fabric color. And then we had the six for decades and then brown and black got added by the city of Philadelphia. And then we ended up with the white, pink and blue for trans and they made the Chevron kind of like, you know, wedge thing. And so I was explaining all of that. And then they were asking about some others. And I was like, you know what? I was like, actually, if you see anybody with a flag, ask them. I said, I'm sure they would be happy to explain what it is. And I think they were really surprised to hear me say that. I was like, of all the days, I didn't I didn't say this to them because I didn't want to queen out, but it's like, baby, this is it. Like, it's pride. Like, if you're going to ask somebody what a flag represents, today's the day. I'm sh- yeah. pretty sure they'll be happy to explain, oh, this is my, you know, asexual, you know, flag, or this is my, um, you know, Sappho flag, or this is my lipstick lesbian flag, or, you know, whatever, so... Interesting. It's, I mean, the big thing is you're asking because you want to be informed. Of course they're going to want to tell you. Right. Especially on a day when they're trying to be proud about what they're flagging. Yeah. That yeah, is yeah. new for me. Okay. What's Sorry. This? There's a there's apparently a men loving men flag. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, like it's to, a top to Google ju- search to, to to kind of join the gays and the bisexuals into to one mm. big category or something. I don't know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. Uh, come on, give me a little, give me a link. Thank you. Um. So there's a men loving men flag, and it's I had never seen it before. I'm going to share it in the chat for us here on. Nope. I'm going to share it in Telegram because I know what happens when it shares on Skype. <laughs> um, come on. There we go. I was just fucking in here. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's the best way to probably describe it is like greenish teal aqua colors that go to white and then bluish co- stripes mm-hmm. to purple. There's one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. And apparently they stand for community, healing, joy, 
Um, and I don't know what those abbreviations are. Uh, pure love, fortitude, and diversity. Okay. What What is GNC? Gender nonconforming. Thank you. So gender nonconforming, non-binary, and trans men. Interesting. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Damon, what are you doing? <laughs> I am, so, the okay. So, in order to get on the web for the telegram, on my on my computer, which I literally did an hour ago, I now had to scan a fucking QR code. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was trying to figure out why you were using your flashlight <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> Just, uh, New technology, so much fun. Uh, uh. Just again, I, I was literally just fucking in here, like not even an hour ago, and it's now I'm like, oh, by the way, you got to do all this shit. Okay, fuck off. Um, yes. So here's the link I was trying to share to you guys. <laughs> so for fuck our off. listeners or viewers, if you haven't figured it out yet, do you know what David is when uh, the AC isn't running? Heated. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bothered. <laughs> Bitch. I can't. I can't. Yes. Okay. Right. Correct. So, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, look. I got the same thing. Isn't that hysterical? I don't know. I'm not having any problems with Telegram. So if you so if you try to use the web version of Telegram, oh, not on your phone. Yeah, right. I I was trying to I was trying to use it on my you know because I was using my phone my computer, and I had just used Telegram like I said an hour ago because mm -hmm. that's how I got the links to the shirts. Go to settings. I use I, I just use the Telegram app on my computer. I don't know your problem. Yeah, well, that's cool. Right, Good. but so the whole thing is for the security aspect, because you're trying to access the web-based version of Telegram on a device, it makes you confirm it with your mobile device, but you have to scan the QR code that it pops up to be able to get the thing to work. So right, right. Yeah. That. I know, I'm just making fun of you, all, uh, both of you, for for not having the app on your computer and not having any issues. It's that's been nice funny. Let's move on. <laughs> right. I think it's time for feedback. <laughs> Let's do it. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebook? Uh, I don't know what's happening with Facebook. I'm not complaining, but <laughs> a month after month after month, we've been getting quite a number of likes on Facebook. So, yay. Yay. We would like to thank the following people for liking us on Facebook. Antonio Medina, Yakum Aharon, Ben Magsino, Farhane Mohammed, Peter Jenny, Navid Sal Salar, Mark Whitley, Abdul Aziz Diop, Dobost Zolt, K. Raymark Theus, David Olney, Wyatt Sanders, K. Daber, Tony Ireland and Axel Santon. Welcome. So thank you. Uh, we also got a couple comments slash posts uh, over on Facebook. So for Cubs Out Loud, number 651 LTAS Internet Security, Tony B said, adorable. I resemble that comment. Aww. So uh, I think he was referencing the, uh, the intro, the, the yes. teaser. Yes. So, uh, and then Gabe Horner liked our COL Drag Race um, All Star Season 7, Episode Number 2 on the Realness and Fortune Ball and Fairy Tale Justice. Yay. And a certain person by the name of Paul Lanner loved our post when we said, Hey, all, which actually should probably be, Hey, y'all. Uh, 
<laughs> Previous guest, Paul Lanner, has an event coming up soon. We'd love to see you there. Check out the info below and head to www.hahtheevent.com for more information about attending, which is the Haunters Against Hate uh, con or convention that he is putting on. I believe it is July 8th through the 10th. Just make sure you spell out the full word the and then the full word yes. event. There's two E's right next to each other. One's the end mm -hmm. of one letter, word and one's the other. So if you are having trouble getting to the exact site, check your spelling. Or just internet search H-A-H event or Hunters Against State event. So yeah. Uh, no feedback from you, Damon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, no one, no one did anything on YouTube for for some strange reason. But over on it's Twitter, not like we just did this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> over on Twitter, um, uh, uh, is it City Kick Prod? Oh Lord! Oh oh oh! Sidekick Prod. Oh, uh, that mm -hmm. sounds familiar. Uh, mm -hmm. There's Bitters Bears F Beardy Bears. Sean seven eight five four six four two one, trans build bear and Zool underscore Eden. Thank you for following us on Twitter. Yay! And <laughs> Gary, who are we shouting out today from our Patreon? Um, so we do want to give some big bear cub hugs to our patrons. Uh, of course, thank you to Charles W at the Cubster level and our Ooh Bears Dave T Lee. Michael Q and Tim S plus our buddies Lloyd G Michael V and Zach B uh, from being continuous supporters over at patreon.com slash cups out loud a dollar or more uh, you get the full feed uh, information so we do pre-show post-show um, and every once in a blue moon we throw in an extra thing plus there are rewards for the different levels so thank you for, again for your support helps keep the lights on as they say the show running all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to recent shows, which is kind of why I made that crack, <laughs> we had episode 650, which was the What's Going On for May of 2022, followed by episode 651, which was the Let's Talk About Sex Internet Security, where Cubs is, a.k.a. Tony, came on uh, and did a really great conversation with us about the Internet of Things when it comes to basically sex toys and how they are not necessarily secure um, from hacking or sharing information. So you should probably really tune into that. Um, he even had some uh, visual uh, demonstration type things about what these different devices are. Visual aids. Yes. And then uh, CO 652 just last week was Altino Shade Pride in 2022. It was in addition to being LT ATNS, it was also a continuation of our in 2022 series. Ah, <laughs> yes, our, our new in unintentional the, series. In 2022. <laughs> Yeah, I think I made that joke the last time we, we did it in 2022 episode, too. Nice. So, yes. There we go. As I was just mentioning a mo uh, moment ago, uh, as a reminder, because uh, I guess our previous guest, Paul Lanner, is putting on the event, um, I would love with people to go to the Haunters Against Hate uh, convention that's coming up. Uh, you can check out the website for support and attending and all, all the stuff that we're kind of talking about is going to be on our cubsoutloud.com blog website. Uh, and that sidekick prod, uh, actually I believe is the Twitter account of sidekick productions, which is the company that our previous guest, Joshua Pangborn leads. Um, and they have a new project underway for their film called a taste of youth, um, which I think is a horror thriller. Um, and, uh, they're doing a fundraising campaign over on Indiegogo. Uh, so if you want to help support queer horror and fat positivity, you can go to a taste of youth.com. We'll have the link to it. Um, so you can help make the horror feature happen. Mm. Thanks. And, uh, previous guests on the show, Joshua Pangborn, as well as the previous guests in the previous iteration, Nikita, uh, is also helping out with that production. Mm -hmm. Nice. I expect there might be singing. I don't know. We'll see. Can't imagine it. He did post on his Twitter. Was it Twitter? Or is it Facebook? I don't remember. One of the two. Uh, Nikia did post a uh, picture of him in his uh, cameo appearance outfit for A Taste of Youth. Cool. 
Nice. Anyways. Uh, ah. Speaking of my candy, why am I not seeing it here? Here it is. Time for this. All right, enough of that. <laughs> Every time. All right, so this might come as a surprise to both of you. Uh, this one's called I Hear Y'all Like Hot Holes. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. I am logged into. Me and Damon's having problems. <laughs> that is a ginger cub yep. with a toy. He's a uh, trans bear, too. That face is very expressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if it works now. This is, Thank uh, you. Pup Sleepy. Uh, by the underscore Sleepy Puppy underscore. And he is thoroughly enjoying himself with the toy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. My, my, my. Mm. Um... <laughs> so, did you look at their per profile and see where they are? No, I was too busy looking at the post. Why? No, oh, he's he's a, oh. he's a little close oh. to Damon. Oh, okay. I know him. I've met him. I oh, literally God. saw him yesterday. <laughs> Not all of him, but <laughs> well, now you have. Kind of, <laughs> mostly. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the bottom of his feet in this picture, apparently. So yeah, in this video. Yeah, well, so. video. Yeah. He's By the socks. way, the hat that Pup Sleepy is wearing in their June twenty five post is super cute, and I'm kind of curious where it came from, and if it means <gasps> anything. Oh. Because it's like a paw print. It kind of looks like it's leather. On a yeah. white ball cap, but it has stitching all around, like, the little beans mm -hmm. and, like, the pad, and it's all in rainbow. But in the middle of the pad, there's, like, a little heart cut out. It's super cute. Oh, that's cute. That is cute. Okay, I'm just oh, going to ask. And that is, and, and that is um, Cincinnati Pride. Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that Love hat? It. <laughs> Reply. Because I know a whole bunch of pups that would like probably really love to get that hat. It's super cute. Cute, cute, uh, cute, cute. Yep, 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 yep. Sleepy puppy, pup sleepy. Thank you. Thanks. They have a black version. <laughs> they have a black version of the hat and a white version of that hat. Did you? How did you find it so quickly? Or did he? Does he have pictures? June twenty second. There's another. If you just keep scrolling through their profile, girl. I stopped. I, I had to stop looking. <laughs> well, anyways, there's another video where they're wearing a black version of the hat. Uh, June 22nd. That's how I found it, anyways. Okay. Okay. I'm just so amused. Cool. Media. There we go. But yeah, I see. Oh, okay. Yes, there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Woo. All right. Dana? I'm being nosy. I'm super fast scrolling through their their Twitter because I'm trying to see if they ever posted when they got the hats and where they got them from. Because <laughs> apparently so, I'm not willing to wait for a reply to my own comment <laughs> just a few minutes ago. Uh, Anyways, um, so I have two, uh, but they're by the same person. Um, which is um, the Damasan, um, and they are um, his Kink Pride series. Um, the first one is um, Under the Cross, and the other one is Under the Flags. Okay. I thought they were really cool. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. That's a good photo. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one. Under the flags. 
Yeah. Wait. So these are okay. Two different subject people, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was confused. I was expecting to see the same person twice, but then oh, I was like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Two different people. Just, okay. just different. It, so the if you go to the um, the Twitter page for this person, they do a lot of this um, rope work photography. Oh, uh, okay. And different different models, you know, different poses. It's really good work. Um, um, and follow. Yes, and um, wow. I, just, I just happened to catch some of these. Um, <gasps> oh. <Ooh. laughs> but our first. That's picture, crazy. But our first picture for Under the Cross is a um, African American man. Um, and it is so the this is looks like a St. Andrew's cross and he is at the bottom of it, or maybe he's connected to it in some way. I'm not quite sure yet. But he uh, is. Well yeah. he's he his his yeah, his feet are roped and anchored and then his wrists are roped and anchored. Yeah. Um and um some beautiful like knot work, um intricate like layered work in the middle of the rope. Yeah, and it's all red rope. Yeah. And then um, for the under the flag, go back so I can uh, talk about it. it is a more daddy bear. Um, it looks like he is laying flat on something. So this is more of an aerial picture, even though it's meant to be like he's under it, the flag. Um, but again, some intricate you know, rope work. Uh, oh, and he's wearing a pride um, uh, American, not pride, but a uh, American flag jock. So the flags, it's the double entendre. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, he's more daddy bearish, very handsome. The both pictures are, I mean, they're both handsome men, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, how do I? Okay. Send direct message. Pop on, bro. There we go. Don't go out of Twitter. Uh oh. I must have missed something. Oh, no, no, no. there it is. Uh oh. That's the one that like really surprised. Oh me. yeah, yeah, that That's is wild. nice. Yeah. Anyways, oh yeah. I mean, you're totally distracted by this Twitter. That is too sub. Okay. So Gary has shared another of the Kink Pride series and. Um, one of the pieces is this beautifully intricate and layered um, shoulder piece. Um, again, the red rope. I think he does a lot of red rope. Yeah. Um, it's and... just it's just wild because it looks like a um, I don't know what the proper name for it is in armor, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it looks like that shoulder like protective piece that comes down across the, the, the side of the chest. Yeah. But it's just, it's wild. Like how it's woven together. It's just, anyways, I think it's, beautiful. yeah, I already yeah. tweeted it, but there we go. Very good. Very good work. Wow. And speaking of Gary, while you're that one, I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> Hi daddy. Okay. Retweet that one. <laughs> Gary. Sorry. Okay. Uh, anyways. Oh, um, sweaty post gym is what I called it. Uh, this is, um, at Grizzly Bader. Um, and he said home from the gym and all sweaty. Uh, and he is wearing a jock and, um, you kind of get some different views, uh, including his hairy butt, um, the ink on his thigh, uh, which I think is a dragon, but I'm not sure. Cause I don't think we get a good full view. Um, of that particular ink or tattoo. Um, but anyways. Yes. Mm. Yes. You know. Yeah. It's got a belly. It's got a hairy oh. back. He's got some nips. I like that he's wearing a jock that has a super wide band. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is one of my, this is just a personal aesthetic thing. I'm not a fan of big boys and jocks. As just a general thing, because more often than not, although it's been getting better in recent years, jocks really aren't usually made for bigger bodies. 
out of the most brands and I find them very annoying because there's just these little things about them that don't seem to fit right. And one of them is a thin waistband. And I'm like, mm-hmm. baby, it's a big dude. You should have a bigger waistband to help hold it in place. And uh, and hopefully not like roll over or, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, kind of tuck on itself. So anyways, so yes, 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 yes. Sweaty. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's my, that's my Twitter peak. Moving on into the links. Uh, I'm going to link the trailer because I couldn't figure out how to link the Netflix page. But uh, on Netflix, the Iron Chef has returned along with Elton Brown and Mark Interesting. as as the chairman. Uh, they have Iron Chef Quest for an Iron Legend. In fact, on Fridays, Good Mythical Morning, Elton Brown was on as well mm-hmm. to help promote it. So uh, there's something that I need to binge. All I know is mm-hmm. it's Elton Brown, it's Iron Chef, uh, button, button, in a different type of way. Understood. Yeah, um, I actually saw the first episode or two of this while I was in Columbus. Mm. Oh, I missed this article. I got to read this article. Okay, so he did depart Food Network. I heard a rumor, but I didn't really look into it. Um, which also explains why he's on Netflix. Got it. Got it. Put, I'm putting it all together. Well, yeah, he had an entire interview about um, what happened there, and he basically was just saying, saying, well, he had to go with Iron Chef. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Iron Chef was going, so he was going with him. Nice. Right. That sounds like a non-answer for a touchy subject. Sorry. Was, Anyways. I, I don't remember where that interview was. I think I, I think that was one of the uh, interviews he had gave, given. Um, it was it, basically when they were promoing before they actually launched it. Uh, when he announced it. And mm-hmm. he, he didn't say he had any hard feelings against Food Network. He just, well, he was going with Iron Chef. Yeah, so this, yeah, the Variety.com article that I just found was from the 16th of June. Um, It says, though his exit was never formally announced, Brown's last deal with the Food Network took him through 2020. And since, he has quietly left the airwaves, Um, which he kind of did. I mean, during the pandemic, he and his wife uh, did a whole YouTube series of, like, cooking shows in their their loft-type home Mm -hmm. for a while. Um, In 2021, new episodes of the show have aired, which is Good Eats The Returned, which debuted on Discovery Plus in early 2021 with a special version of Chopped in the same summer. Um, Brown told Variety that he caught wind of Netflix rebooting it and was immediately interested in joining the series. Mm. Mm -hmm. Neat. Yeah, and he has a new co-host, Kristen Kish. She's cute. She's nicely knowledgeable. Um, If you haven't seen the series, I do recommend you check it out if you like the the earlier iteration with Alton. Um, it's nice. It's good. Yeah, he, I, I like. He said he had a good had a good time with him with her. So, yeah, I, I'm excited to actually watch the shows. So. Uh, yeah, it, it is a different aspect of of things because the idea is that all the competitors um, are competing against each other, uh, not only against the chefs, but you're competing against each other because you theoretically want to beat the chefs as many times as possible. But of the contestants, the finale is you competing against all five celebrity chefs at the same time. Oh, wow. Right. It's a little cray care cray, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Anyways. So there's that. There's that. Gary? Uh, going back. Oh, um, DC's Legends of Tomorrow final season. Now, it isn't called the final season formally anywhere, but if you don't know... Um, the CW announced they are not renewing it. Okay. Which is awkward because I think this is the sixth season and the very last episode acted like there was going to be a seventh season. And I believe the writers, the producers were planning on making a seventh season and it was going to be the final season. And then that's not happening. So Mm. 
Um, but if you've if you've watched the Legends of Tomorrow since the beginning, which I basically have, um, I got behind for a little while, caught up on a season or two. That's what I had to do to get to this. Um, because I was like, oh, that's right. You know, I normally watch it on Netflix and um yeah. So then when I was like, wait, like, is this the last season? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, no, yes, it is the last season, but it wasn't planned to be, which makes it awkward. Um, but it, it, it's kind of fun. Um, well, it is fun. But the only thing about it is, like, I think in the beginning of this whole series, they were a little more serious about storylines and plots and, like, characters. But Baby, I can't remember if it was, like, season three or season four. Woo! They just started getting loosey-goosey and kind of crazy. Um so if if you if you're looking for something to uh, suspend reality and just have like a kind of romp of weirdness, um, you know, traveling through time and correcting things and all sorts of quirky shit happening, yeah. Um, so there's that. I would recommend that. And uh, I already talked about Obi Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus uh, just a couple weeks ago for the month of May. It wrapped. Uh, I still highly recommend people go see it. Since then, Ms. Marvel has um, started on Disney Plus, and I am really enjoying the show. Cool. Uh, I am super happy at what they've done. I obviously am, of the three of us, the non-comic reader, so I really don't know much. Um, I know that they've strayed from the comics in certain ways and that people are kind of mm -hmm. not so happy about that, but... Uh, this kind of reminds me of Moon Knight in that the people that are making this are of the culture that is being represented. And that is so huge because it is to me as a white American who was raised in like kind of a Christian kind of environment. I know Jack about Islamic culture, um, Pakistani culture. Uh, mm. And it is so nice to see that culture represented, that spirituality and a mosque and like just traditions of like clothing and garb and celebrations and food and family. Like it's just I'm so, so pleased and happy like with what they're putting out there. And I really, truly hope that what I'm seeing, because I don't know the difference, is as authentic as you can get within the show. Mind you, it is Marvel and it is fantastical about mm. a young teenage girl who develops superpowers. Um, this is Kamala Khan, not the original Ms. Marvel, which was Carol Danvers, which they've only shown as uh, Captain Marvel. Correct. In the comic books, there was also uh, a Captain Marvel uh, who preceded, and Carol Danvers was Ms. Marvel. Well, there was a Captain Marvel, and then she eventually became Captain Marvel and... Nowadays, right. it, because she was so excited, she got superpowers, wanted to name herself. She wanted to name herself after one of her favorite superheroes and called herself Miss Marvel. Um, yeah, and we're only three episodes, I think, into the series so far. Or is it four? I can't remember. Um, but it's been good, and I've really been enjoying it. Um, I love the fact that it's a teenager. And I love that it's in today's culture. So there's like text messaging references, pop culture things. Mm -hmm. If I had anything that was a little bit of a criticism, um, girl. Okay, so the high school counselor who's obviously gay without saying he's gay. But come on, like there's a part <laughs> of me that's like, I don't know if this actor's gay. If he's straight, I wouldn't be surprised because I'm thinking we're just we're just, you know. When you make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, baby, like there's a ratio and you only need so much of the filling. You don't need to make it that thick. Just going to say, like, because the scripting and the and the affectation, some of the stuff, I'm like, you could probably, you know, pull it back just a little bit. Um, and what's funny to me about it is I think they're trying to be relatable as a high school counselor to these teens. And that's where I'm like, why does this role always seem weird in Hollywood? Why can't you all ever get this role right in any? Probably because a lot of Hollywood writers <laughs> had interactions with, with their high school counselors and they always were just weird. Mm, it could be. So, yeah, no, um, it's really interesting. And. What I'm loving and I want to know more about is the Department of – oh, shit. What the hell is it called in the show? Department, Department of Damage Control. Thank you. Because I've never heard of the DODC before because I don't know jack shit about Marvel like the two of you do. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, oh, this is interesting. It's, it's not a high-profile job. Well – 
And Let actually, I don't say, think they really started uh, damage control uh, until like the late 2000s. No, it's been like around, around since Civil the 80s. War, wasn't it? No, it's been around since the 80s. Really? If not before that. Yeah, it was it, called it's damage never control. really highlighted very often. It's like here and there, but. It depends on the comic you're reading. Or, yeah. Because it's, it, they were, anyway. Yeah, I'm, to, I'm talking about like publication history. Yes, right. I understand. Yeah. So, so, yeah, according to the Marvel Cinematic Universe wiki, it was established in 2012 um, as, and it was a joint venture with Stark Industries. And then by 2024, the DODC had transitioned to a federal agency. And apparently this is what is the current MCU timeline iteration of what used to be S.H.I.E.L.D. So that being said, the whole reason I bring up the DODC is because there seems to be a good cop, bad cop kind of thing going on. And the woman is the bad cop. She's the bitch. And I'm like, I hope you get yours because I don't like you. I'm sure you're a very nice woman, <laughs> but as an actress, you're doing a great job because I don't like you. Yeah. You're rude and disrespectful and underhanded. And so there's that. Anyways. Mm -mm -mm. It's funny okay. to hear me be so invested in the yeah. actor of a TV show. Anyways, I just, <clears throat> I don't like her. She's not nice. I'm like, what the hell's the matter with you? Anyways. <laughs> Oh, yeah, hey, guess what, folks? That's the end. Aww. Well, anyway, let's contact us. Uh, let us know what you think of Damage Control and uh, Miss Marvel. Uh, you could do that over on our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our Entourage chat where you can get a play-by-play -play of the today's episode uh, by uh, joining that chat from Owen. Uh, you can also get uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar to see when we're planning on recording these shows at tinyrail.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements over at Zazzle at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where I just happened to buy some new shirts that may be appearing in the store very soon. Hmm, mm -hmm. what could those be? Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of those designs were designed by Smashy, uh, where you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Um, if you would like to become a patron like the ones that we hugged the today and gave a shout out to, at pa you can do that over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you just want to send us a donation to help us keep the lights on, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Audible, and basically anywhere where you can find podcasts. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Step, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, or Windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, on Twitch, where I stream bears and dragons on Thursdays. Damon. My thumb disappeared. Okay, sorry. <laughs> If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Or you can find me as Pub underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm -mm. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. My Twitter, the main Twitter that I'm usually on, is GearBear73XXX. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>